So oh, good morning, everybody. Um, really nice talking to you here. Actually, I'm um, not a robot or an AI researcher. I'm a kind of psychologist and also going to be a scientist. And then, um, I, uh, I put in this title, but probably I'm not talking this one. Somehow, you know, talking about something else. Um, as a psychologist, and also the, I'm interested in human more than AI or the robots. And then sometimes we make us some art installation that try to make how people react to the robot. Uh, this is a robot made by the uh, uh, Takashi Ikegami and Hiroshi Siguro. This is an altar. It's a new robot, new Android. And then we made it so that, you know, this Android somehow giving you uh, some fortune telling things and uh, how people react on that. That's kind of things which I'm interested in because I'm interested in how people react, how people interact with the robot. And I'm interested also in the detail of very small movement of the people, you know, when we face with this kind of robot. And it has been popular in the around world. And then this altar doesn't have any brain, actually, you know, just reacting to the you know environment, but somehow we read their movement so that it has some meaning on that. That's a kind of human nature. You know, we make a we think about the meaning, even though it's not having a meaning. Then um, the previous talk, so this is my abstract, and I'm talking about agency, experience, social interface, um, forget about this. Um, I'm not talking about this um, because uh, these are all covered by the previous talk, and uh, that's the main theme of the AI and the robot. And, but my idea, so I'm talking about more peripheral things about you know, the, how uh, people react unconsciously to the robot and people reacting to the people then one of the question, if you have some big problem, do you want to ask your grandmother or very clever and reliable AI? And then even though you know that you know, AI is better than the, you know, your grandmother, if you're the, you know, the choice is your lifetime, like you know, who you're going to marry, then if the AI giving this guy A and the grandmother is B, and most likely you're going to take a B, then why? So that's a very important question to me why people trust a human more than the you know, uh, AI. Then I think two basic concepts is very important in the, um, you know, compared between the human and AI, the social micro interaction. It's a very small uh, movement, which somehow uh, transfer between the two people, which is the basis of the uh, social uh, interaction. And also that we have a body and we have a surrounded by culture. Uh, we have a history of the communication or you know, interaction with the people. And this is a very old study which I have done. You know, even though you know the robot well, that knowing is not important and uh, not enough. Somehow, if you um, interacting with the uh, um, Android and or then you get the more uh, anthropomorphism, possible intelligence. Uh, somehow, it's interesting. Possible intelligence decrease. Somehow, if you're interacting with a robot and the AI, because you know you expect it, they must be much intelligent than the, this. And then this shows actual interaction is important. You you so you are taught, you you have a knowledge about the robot. You not you know the very detail of the robot and the AI. But actually, in front, if you met the, the robot directly, there has been change of the perception. But this is enough because um, most of the human interaction go implicitly. So how we interact go uh, without notice the, uh, the person. The wonderful experiment which we have done, just um, it's very, one of the most simple experiments I've done. It basically, basically your task, is just uh, keeping the finger still, just keep your finger still, don't move. But there's another person in front of you do the exactly the same. The question is how the two fingertips synchronize. That's a very simple task. Your task is not to do so. And this is a finger point. You will see, and then you don't know, you know, whether your finger is somehow, you know, drifted with the people. So you, you think you are finger still, but it's somehow it's moving. And if you take a correlation between the two people's fingers and then and then and compare with the swapped condition, swapped condition is the best idea. If you take an experiment A and B uh, participant, and also the experiment C and D. And if you compare between the A and C, this is a soft condition. So the 
this enhancement is enhancement due to the fact that somebody in front of you under the larger cross correlation of the actual pair compared to the first one. So there's some increase with the fact that there's in front of you. And then this is our average data. You get some increase in the, of the finger position. This is just the beginning. Then I add in the adaptation period. So the, there's a reader, sorry, moving. Reader is moving their finger freely. The follower following their finger position. I keep in the some four minutes. Then you do the exactly same task, pre and after the, this adaptation. The question is just following the other people's movement does change your you know, synchronization with the people. And it does, in a sense, just you know, following the people's movement somehow um, change your relation to the other people. Then as an experiment psychologist, there's a bunch of control, which I think, you know, just uh, the, the leader moving their finger, the follower doesn't move it. Then do exactly the same, and you didn't get the effect. So you need to move the finger with the other person. Then obviously the another control that, you know, the leader moving their finger, the follower moving a finger freely again. So doesn't, doesn't follow it. They didn't get the, this is just take a peek of the uh, task, so you didn't get the effect. The final one is uh, one of my favorite is that the the reader is blindfolded and they move their finger. The follower following their finger position. The in terms of the movement, exactly the same as experiment one, but the reader doesn't see the follower's movement. Then you don't get it. So this means there's some mutual information going on between the reader and the follower, which is somehow making the synchronization of the body movement. And we create this uh, enhancement of the body movement with uh, how much you like the other person. Then if you get the more synchronization, you're gonna like it more. Then additionally, so there's some mutual interaction between this. And we did uh, some switch experiment in this adaptation of the money movement or synchronization is a person specific. So you have an A and B a pair, a C and D pair. In the adaptation, you switch uh, D and B. And back to A and B. And then if this adaptation is uh, you know, human specific, anything, anything about you know, human, then you get uh, some enhancement even after switch. But if it doesn't increase, that means this adaptation is human specific. Then it does. It's it's different way of the presenting its uh, data, but somehow if it's uh, this uh, plus sign is off the diagonal, you get the enhancement. So again, so just I'm gonna skip in this. And this is somehow created with this is enhancement of the uh, adaptation or the enhancement of body synchronization is somehow created with the communication skill of the AQ score. And then um, we also did uh, some hyper scanning of the brain and you know is there anything happening to the brain is there any brain activity somehow predicting this enhancement of the uh, finger movement i'm not going to detail on this but somehow i just said there is there is something in this so it's very important for me it's um somehow this is a person specific so in order to get know the other people so you know you don't have a get you know nodes you don't get any uh body synchronization to the you know, people in general. You get somebody uh, having so some dynamics, somehow getting the uh, exchange between two people, making this connection. This is why one of the reasons why you use a grandmother down the uh, very, very clever AI, because your grandmother, you know, they, they know you well, and he, she know you well. And somehow we know each other, we are, are trusting each other, not due to the you know a word or in a voice, but that somehow body synchronization giving you the some trust, some mind, and then, which is a um, different aspect of the trust, which you know the previous talk is somehow you reliable or not. Somehow you trust it, even though the grandmother is not perfect. So that's why I'm interested, in, and also the uh, we did another experiment to the to, when two person collaborate, somehow the brain behaving differently. This is another one. And then also, even without knowing each other, we intent, um, implicitly know 
whether this person is like. So this is another task which I use. This is, um, there are two cross signs just moving uh, up and down due to the pressure of the finger uh, of the bottom pressing. And after the four seconds, it's become one. And the two person need to make the, this uh, cross point still certain level. And you don't know, you know how much other person making a force. Then you get uh, some combined force. You get some in a good uh, still uh, position. And after this perturbation, you get some you know, uh, adjustment on that. And then, but if you divide it into the uh, two persons, you get a two uh, force. One is uh, you know almost making a larger force and almost adjusting the the, the, uh, the force. The other one didn't do anything. And then, and if this is a kind of general trend, you know, having this one and one person becoming stronger and stronger, the other person becoming weaker and weaker. And then how do you decide? You know, you don't know, you know, whether you're making the stronger uh, force or uh, weaker force. And then interestingly, this pattern is happening every trial. And even from the beginning, that, that means these two person knows each other somehow. I'm gonna make a big power, a uh, big force than the others, and it's keeping almost down, you know, all the time. So there's some information is uh, transferred between two person to having some agreement, so called implicit agreement, um, with what kind of you know, task division should be made, and then also this division when this does not relate to the you know actual report, even though, even though you said I, I, I was, I was, I was uh, pushing stronger than the other guy, it was not. So people don't know how much contribute, how much force they're making it. So this again shows that the, um, 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 how much power you make. So that initially we got some information which giving you um, the, the first, First, we met somehow in you know, giving you information. What kind of person are you? And we did uh, some uh, brain measurement on that. So, so far, I've been talking about the uh, human interaction. And then also, we are trying to make into the uh, measuring the many people at the same time, the measuring crowds. And this is uh, using the, some wearable device to measure two people or many people at the same time. And uh, by doing this, we have a bunch of things we can do. And also we get some measurement of how people affecting the people's uh, crowd of people affecting crowds of people. And then after measuring this, we can uh, measure the uh, internal state of the um, peoples and uh, how much uh, focus on the human, human uh, national social interaction and physical activities. Then finally, and uh, we kind of developing some room which you can measure the, all the, these a physical activity of movement in one room, which uh, I made it in Sydney, and it's a national facility for human robot injection research. But obviously, this uh, Corona thing somehow prevented going there, and I couldn't do it. But actually, you know, if after finishing on that, we'll be uh, starting how people on the now robot is trying to uh, communicate implicitly by using a micro uh, body movement. So this is a um, uh, thing which. Uh, I tried to do it, but I couldn't do it. So anyone could want to use it, please just uh, come to Sydney and they're just using this one too. So this is one thing I'm um, thinking that this uh, micro increased movement is important because the uh, trust or the human communication is based on this micro movement. And also um, as a psychologist, I'm interested in body and the culture and the history. And uh, uh, robot is not a function, it's just robot morphology making a huge difference. After uh, interacting with the robot, somehow um, design or behavior influence the perception and expectation of the robot rather than the you know, ability of the robot on that. So um, still, you know, Android is scary, obviously. Anything, you know, it, it increased the um, perception, but it's still it's, uh, less than humanoid, uh, non, you know, humanoid-like robot. Then AI and also robots are the artifact, which is influenced by the culture and the age. And then I'm not talking about robots now, but still on why this kind of the perception may differ between the different cultures. 
one of the artifacts, which is a, a Buddhist statue, which I have been studying this one almost 10 years ago. And then you know, how people uh, represent the body movement or face in the artifact. Then um, when you are studying this, because uh, there's only one statue on the, studying on the face, and it, obviously you couldn't do a study on that. And it, we wanna have a many, many statue. It looks alike, but different one, one each other. In Kyoto, there's some Sanju Sangedo temple, which is about 1,000 you know, uh, statue on that, which having a different face on that. Then uh, there are 1,000, and then we're gonna take a picture on that and asking for you know, how much, what kind of the uh, expression they have, what kind of the, you know, or where the gender of the, uh, 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 the, this uh, statue and how old they are. Then we are trying to make it to take a picture and it's very simple experiment. But obviously this is a national treasure, it's, um, it's prohibited. You couldn't take it and you couldn't take the uh, picture on that. And then these are the things which I, I would like to ask you for the AI, you know, what I should do. You know, on this, you know, the, if the AI said, you know, we couldn't do it, it's not the answer. And is there any way to sneak in to take a picture of that? And then after the half years, um, we took it. Anyway, we took it. And then that's kind of weird, but you know, that's something which you're asking, negotiating with people and just try to take a picture. And after getting this, these pictures, I'm just trying to make sure that, and asking for the, you know, what kind of, is that a female or male? With how old he is or she is? What kind of um, um, expressions they have? And whether the, the, these um, statue looking at you or not? Or that kind of question we ask. And then we, we did it for you know uh, more than 200 uh, statues. And then if you take a correlation that American and Japanese, it's well created, you know, it's, um, it's almost like, you know, uh, the um, expression made by the uh, this Buddhist statue is shared by the two uh, cultures. But if you take up affective variation, it's a Japanese have a very specific um, impression about the sadness. And this is just from one um, statue and the sadness and happiness in one statue in a sense that it's very ambiguous phrase. And then, this uh, analysis of the uh, facial expression is somehow dominated by this uh, sadness, happiness, rise, anger, it, it's the Ekman's face study. But if you talk, went to the different culture, they have a different uh, expression of the uh, face and which could be, could be implemented into the um, uh, robot design or the AI design. So we, what I wanna say is the, uh, the culture is important. It's that maybe there's a culture specific robot or culture specific AI can be made or domestic AI, which I don't know it's possible or not. Then um, this is another experiment I have done and it's very, very um, small experiment which my, one of my students did and um, which is basically dumping the agent in a sense uh, the, the experimenter just try to communicate with the uh, audio agent talking to them and uh, having a, some use the uh, um, this um, um, so-called AI agent. And then having talking to them, the main point is just uh, at the end, we wanna throw away the one of these. And then this is the one things. And after finishing the experiment and you, So, so she said, throw away. And then, you know, this guy just throw away, just, just that. That's simple, that's simple things. And then next guy, the, the person asking you the uh, speaker, which he likes, okay. And then, now, say so you choose this. When I throw away, throw away, or dump it, throw it. He was so surprised, you know, I must throw this away. I mean, just, it's so, and put things very slowly, put them there. And then this is a weird, this AI agent, which is not really to this speaker itself, it's behind it, but somehow this object 
is very important to him. And then this happening in the in Ivo things in the Sony Ivo uh, robot pet, which is a um, uh, recent one is uh, becoming, becoming a new one. And the old one is still exist. And this old one is uh, some professional uh, repair guy who is uh, retired from the Sony. He's specialized to just uh, repair only for repairing the old Ivo. And that he got a lot of fortune over because you know people want up this Ivo is important, the, the new one. And then there's a, a, a ritual to just uh, you know having the um, some making the Ivo um, funeral for them and they're special for that. And then this is also the very important. So even the AI and the robot is a functional having a um, some um, some important ability of that. And also the body itself is important. I mean, okay. then obviously there are the two. Um, famous study on one of the, the uh, mind perception is based on experience and agency and the robot is, doesn't have a experience but has some agency but less than God and we try to do this one in Japanese people too then it turned out to be uh, there's um, um, some very good cross that still robot is in beneath here but we don't know you know at this age about you know five years ago and now we don't know whether what's happening in um, in these days. So we can just repeat this experiment actually soon. So um, I want to just wrap up. And um, I, I, as I said, I'm just talking about the peripheral aspect of the uh, peripheral, but the very important aspect of the uh, AI interaction between the AI and human and uh, AI uh, human robot. And the social micro interaction, which is a very unconscious, which is a somehow based, like, um, based of the you know, culture. Uh, social interaction. And they, we shouldn't forget about the AI. Still AI do have a body and a culture and a created in the history. And these are supported by this Japanese agency and also the uh, Ministry of the Japan. And finally, we're gonna have uh, some conference in the uh, the next year. It's, uh, it's postponed about uh, two times. It's Berlin. Uh, we are talking about uh, artificial intelligence and the uh, cross-cultural perspective and then also science or the fiction on that. That could be, the fiction could represent the, what kind of expectation we have towards the AI and also the what's going to be the AI in the next five years. Thank you. No, the thanks goes to you. Uh, that was yeah. uh, fantastic. Thank you so very much for that wonderful and extremely clear uh, talk. I, I, I have to admit, I, uh, I, I know your work from, from before having invited you, uh, because oh, okay. I uh, and so I, I love your 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 human human interaction studies that you began with uh, the social micro interaction studies. Uh, we do have a question on that, uh, and then if there's sure. time, I'll I'll allow myself uh, to to jump in. Yeah. So we have a question that says fascinating experiments, and I think specifically he means those uh, those um, social micro experiments. He says, uh, what would you predict in those studies? Uh, the finger experiment for human interactions with robots, which I think is obviously the, the natural extension to what you presented. Uh, no, we don't. Um, as long as the uh, robot having, having a, some um, some kind of algorithm to copy a movement. And um, uh, we did uh, some experiment with a uh, human-human interaction, but having uh, some time lag between them, it's having a videotape on that, it didn't get the effect. So somehow robot need to react to our movement. So so robot need to have some. Well, I would say yes and no. And if robot having some sensor to sense this uh, implicit or very small movement, uh, if if the robot do have or if the AI do have or avatar do have some kind of being algorithm to just adjusting their movement based on the, my movement then could be the, something happened. And there may be increasing some likability of the uh, robot. And uh, even they can outperform us, you know, they could be uh, some you know, perfect synchrony with us. You know, almost them, you know, they might have uh, some better, um, uh, bit more liked by, than the people. I don't know, just now, um, that's a possibility. So that, that's one of the suggestions, you know. If you want just maybe robot do need to having you know, some small fluctuation movement which somehow mimicking my movement, then might be, you know, 
uh, people tend to like this or maybe trust the robot, even though they don't know why um, I like this robot more than the other, because we don't know somehow, you know, just I, just, I like this one. We just need to make the robots look like our grandmother and we'd be fine. Um, we have another follow-up yeah. question, which yeah. says, is this prediction or worry correct that facial expressions that a humanoid domestic robot learns to use in Japan might not well uh, not, might not work well in another part of the world? So it's sort of the, uh, the idea that you presented that there might be cultural specificities. Um, That's true. And I think the, you know, it's more like, you know, human-human interaction. You know, it's, it's, um, it's uh, understanding the other culture. It's difficult, you know, whenever you went to the another culture, you know, reading their face is difficult sometimes. Well, well, you get used to that. And then that's important in the sense that, you know, for us, you know, the, uh, you know, Disney movie is so facially exaggerated and very strong and then, you know, and then that's why somehow having trouble. But I'm feeling that, you know, it can be adapted in very small, few, you know, short time, you know, one or two days, how people tend to get used to how people, you know, how they're producing this kind of emotion. So that's another in important um, aspect of the, you know, uh, human AI, human robot interaction, how human easy to adapt on that kind of the uh, situation. And then facial exhibition is still, still it's very um, freaky at, at, the, at this point. But I did, I did think that that was very interesting that you, you said that people grew so attached to, to their little doggies, their little robot dogs, um, oh, that, yeah. you, that you get used yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah. I think that, 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 that really suggests that, that people are investing, you know, that they are, that that, that connection does actually exist uh, if, if, the, if those criteria are met. Um, I think that's right. probably all the time we have left uh, because we have our okay. next speaker waiting in the wings. But once again, thank you so much uh, to Katsumi Watanabe for his incredible talk. There's one last question in the YouTube live chat from uh, mm -hmm. one of our other speakers um, who has asked for the reference for your uh, mirroring uh, behavioral experiments uh, between sure. you. If you could maybe uh, pop uh, into I, the chat and uh, just let oh, yeah. somebody it's, have um, the... It, 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 it's I've done this experiment almost 20 years ago. I never published. So that's, um, I'm going to put in, uh, I do have some, you know, uh, free print uh, putting Fantastic. on this. Um, yeah. Yes.